one of the most sobering scriptures in the entire Bible is Romans 125, where it says they exchange the truth of God for a lie. And the reason I say it's so sobering is nobody wakes up one day and says, you know what I want to do today? I want to exchange some of God's life-giving glorious truths for some really horrible lies of the enemy that's going to limit me and hinder me and interfere with me walking in everything God has for me. What happens, though, is the enemy uses circumstances. The enemy uses things that have gone on in our past or going on in our future to get his lies into us so we actually choose to believe them and then he can block hinder limit and interfere so the question is especially in this this hour where it's just lie after lie after lie coming to us from you know the media coming to us from political leaders coming at us from uh, uh business and 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 big tech and big pharma so how do we know not just that lies are coming at us because come on when, when we recognize it is a lie we reject it we're like i want nothing to do with that but what do we do when we start to realize, man, things aren't going the way I want them to. I, I don't feel like I'm walking in the fullness of everything God has for me, which usually means we've allowed some lies to get in. So how do we overcome those lies so that we can walk in the glorious future God has for us? Or how do we even know if we have bought into a lie? Well, I'm glad you're here with me because that's exactly what we're going to talk about with a very good friend of mine who's actually an expert at this at helping you identify lies that are limiting you, but even more importantly, overcoming them so that you can start walking in the glorious future God has for you. Let me bring in my very good friend, Ed Rush. Ed, buddy, how are you? What's up, Robert? I'm excited to get going, man. I want to go back to, um, if I can, yeah. to a dinner conversation I observed on Thanksgiving dinner in 1992. Uh, my mom, uh, who was a staunch conservative at the time, uh, was that was the year it was George Bush against uh, Bill Clinton, this young you know Arkansas governor nobody knew, knew, knew about. And across the table was my Aunt Georgie. Uh, and I remember my Aunt Georgie in the middle of Thanksgiving saying, you know, we just need change. We just need change. That's why this Clinton fellow is going to change things for us. And my mom said, well, what kind of change do you need? And she said, ah, we just need change. We just need change. And they argued for about 12 minutes. Uh, I watched it like the, the tennis ball going back and forth and back and forth. My mom and, and Aunt Georgie. And it was the first time I ever witnessed a Twitter debate uh, before Twitter. Uh, and it, it, it so accurately defines the state that so many uh, believers are in, which is there, there are just some things that people believe that have become literal strongholds uh, that only God can get rid of. And part of my mission, as you know, uh, having been a fighter pilot and, and then an entrepreneur, is to help people un, uh, un deprogram the lies that the enemies place into their brain and then literally physically reprogram their neurology. When I say literally physically, I mean actual neurons reconnecting so that they can think God's thoughts after them. And it means more life. It means more prosperity. It means more vitality. So I'm looking forward to today. Yeah, you're so you have a true God-given gift for this because not only do you help them reprogram, but I've I've done I like your God Talks events where you teach people to hear from God, to not only get wisdom, but the thing that I love that's so unique about what you do and the events that you do is that you help people work with God so God can actually point out you've believed a lie in this area. So we don't even have to come to God and say, ah, he's so willing to say, oh, all you have to do is ask what lies have you believed about this or about that? And he'll he'll highlight it because he wants us walking in our glorious future even more than we want to walk in our glorious future. I mean, it's unbelievably simple. So, you know, the interesting thing about wisdom, wisdom is always simple. You know, one of the gifts God's given me is the word of wisdom, the ability to speak wisdom into people's lives, particularly for business. And I will tell you, every time wisdom shows up, you know, and partners with you and gives you new ideas, it's always the most simple thing. In other words, an entrepreneur will look at me after I've delivered something that came from wisdom and they'll go, wow, that, how did I, how did I see that? That's, that's so, so simple. And it's this way too, when it comes to the lies that you believe, it's such a simple process. I'm actually fascinated uh, that I, after 6,000 years of, you know, human history or whatever, it, written history, whatever it's been, that I was able to kind of put this down into a system that we call God Talks. But it fundamentally begins with asking God questions. And it's crazy. Like, 
so many people come up to me and say, I'm not sure if I can hear from God or if I'm not sure if I'm hearing from God clearly. I just like ask him the questions and see what happens. And when you begin this process that we call God Talks, I mean, you've been to the event we did last February. Robert, by the way, you should know this is speaking at my next God Talks Wisdom for Business event. That's how much I love his message and his passion. Uh, but when, when people show up, they literally completely change. And it's simply because they've unraveled a lie. And I can tell you that the the way in which you think directly affects the way you act. So your so your th- words become thoughts, your thoughts become actions, and your actions become results. Most people look at the results in their life, their physical fitness, their bank account, their relationships, their, you know, kids and 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 feel a lot of times like it's the outside like there's a lot of things on the outside that are affecting them and that can be true but i will tell you the enemy's forces are extremely limited and so the enemy goes around looking for people to target and if you're uh, i always tell people rule number 1 in spiritual warfare is don't shoot yourself okay first step don't take your ammo and shoot yourself and if the enemy sees like uh you know a bunch of people up on the hill over there and they're all just shooting themselves or they're shooting each other, the enemy will literally move to the next thing. So a lot of times people look at their financial situation or they look at their uh, relational relational situation or look at some frustration that they have in their life or in their business or in their career, and they start to look on the outside like I'm being attacked by the enemy uh, or you know some sort of spiritual warfare is coming my way. And that can be true, by the way. I'm a firm believer in spiritual warfare. But the first place to look is where are you attacking yourself? Not to mention the fact that those lies actually become strongholds that if the enemy really wanted to attack, they could easily go in. And so what you believe about yourself, what you believe about God, what you believe about your past, your future, money, what you believe about your purpose, what you believe about your business, if you have a business, is essential. And the first step, I mean this when I say this, the first step is to do what Paul said to do in Romans 12.1 or 12.1 or 12.2, whichever the verse. He says, look, I think 12.1 is a living sacrifice. In Romans 12.2, Paul says, uh, don't be conformed to the world. We're like really, really popular, popular part of the verse. He's like, don't be conformed to the world. But be transformed, and Paul says, by the renewing of your mind. The word transformed is, is the Greek word metamorpho. I'm not a Greek scholar. I just looked that one up. And it, and when I started bouncing around on my on my olive tree app and trying to find other places that word showed up, it fascinated me to see that that word actually showed up when Jesus was transfigured on the Mount of Transfiguration. It was the same word, transfigure, transform. So when Paul says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. He's speaking to a group of people that knew and heard the story about Jesus turning blindingly white, becoming boom, like who he was in heaven. And everyone's like, man, this I can't even see, you know? And, and that word transformed is the exact same word that Paul uses when he says you need to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. I will tell you, first step, first step, first step. If you want to be prosperous, if you want to accomplish your mission on earth, if you want to connect more passionately with God, if you want to move the ball forward with a nonprofit or your business or in your career, the first step is to renew your mind. And the first step on that is to simply ask God really good questions. And fundamentally, that's what I teach people how to do. And it's amazing I have done this, I think, I, I've been saying for a while, over 10,000 people. It's probably over 20,000 people at this point. Uh, and God always shows up. He always shows up. I, you would, uh, some of the most skeptical people, atheists, agnostics, people who like, you know, grew up hating the church, man, they take out their, art, their, their page. Next thing you know, they're downloading things from God. And even some of the most spiritually connected people in the world have been using this process to connect to God. So it's super fun. And it's uh, terrifying, frankly, the enemy. Uh, really terrifying the enemy because it is the solution. Frankly, this is the solution to the issues that we're having in the world. If only people would take their question first to God, instead of to their social media platform, instead of to their friends, <laughs> instead, of, instead of to their like little breakfast group, it would change everything. I agree. You know, the Lord told me earlier this year, Ed, that um, he will always be in the business of sending out missionaries and he will always use his church to send out missionaries. He wants the whole wide world saved. He wants the whole wide world to hear the gospel. He told me while he'll never stop launching missionaries, his heart's desire in this season is to start launching a move of solutionaries where he can send <laughs> solutionaries out into every sphere of influence. You know, the popular uh, term these days is the seven mountains of influence. He wants to send solutionaries out into every sphere of influence that are the Daniels, the Meshach, the Shadrach, the Abednegoes, the Josephs. You know, we talk about that, but God wants to do that today where he sends people into government. He sends people into media. 
He sends people into business and and different aspects of business from tech to pharma. He sends people out into arts and entertainment, into the church, into families, into every single sphere of influence with solutions. And it is so simple because like you say, it starts with, okay, God, this is the problem. So now I'm going to come to you for the answers. But the key is that first step knowing there's a problem because the nature of deception is you don't know you're deceived right (laughs) and again it's so simple you don't know you're deceived in the areas where you're deceived so one of the things i've learned to do is you look at the areas of your life that don't look like heaven on earth right whether you know whatever it is and then you go okay wait a minute because it's the circumstances it's the events it's the it's the history that we have that all of a sudden let the lies of satan come in and we don't even realize we've accepted them as a truth well you know i'm never i'm never going to have a billion dollars or i'm never my you know my business is only going to be this successful or i'm never going to get to that next level in this or you know in i i i feel a call to media but man i can't get past 100 subscribers on youtube i guess that's not just for me because i've been at it for 6 whole months and and we look at circumstances we exchange eternal truth for temporary facts and facts change Truth doesn't, but facts won't change until we're willing to believe eternal truth over the facts. So other than what I just said, Ed, about how we can look at like certain areas, like some people, it might be their bank account. Some people, it might be a history of failed relationships and they just accept, okay, I guess this is it. Are there any other clues to where we have believed a lie and we need to go to God and say, Okay, this area is really limited, God. What belief? What what have I chosen to believe about money that's limiting me? What have I chosen to believe about myself or about relationships that's limiting me? Are there any other clues to how to start the process? Yeah, yeah great question. Thank you. So it's interesting you, you what you mentioned about the way the mind thinks. So there is a, a concept called confirmation bias. Anyone who studied neurology, uh, or frankly, anyone who st- studied communication understands the concept of confirmation bias. That is a person's way of thinking that makes it nearly impossible to break through uh, their way of thinking unless you use some really heavy like psychological techniques or like the tool that we're talking about, which is called uh, God Talks. The best way to see confirmation bias is uh, like right now on uh, Twitter or X or whatever whatever you call it. There's this whole discussion about uh, the presidential candidates, you know, the two 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 candidates. And um, I'm not going to take a side. I'm just going to tell you uh, there's a whole bunch of people who like one person and there's a whole bunch of people who like the other person and they're all talking to each other. Uh, one thing that's not happening is nobody from over here is going, you know, ah, well, I, I see your point. That's a really good point. Like, I think I'm going to vote, vote for him now. And nobody over here is like, well, like, really? Wow. That's really great. He's a felon. Oh my gosh, I'm going to change my mind. Like nobody's doing that. And that's a perfect example of, of confirmation bias. You could have uh, a set of circumstances on one side and a set of circumstances on the other side. And one group of people can't figure out why the other group of people can't think like them. Well, that's because they're basically watching the same movie uh, or two movies on the same screen. Literally, their minds are interpreting the world completely differently. That comes down to neurology. That is literally the wiring of a person's brain. And it starts from early on. Like I'm talking about like from zero, when you start learning languages, those co- that coding starts to go into your brain. So let me give you an example. I'm going to give you a direct political example. So I was a Marine. I flew air, uh, airplanes. I'm, I'm very adept with weapons. Okay. I have guns. And, um, and I think, you know, that's a good thing for people to have for self-defense and all kinds of hunting and things like that. One of my best friends, literally one of my best friends, I started a business with this guy. I love this man, uh, is easily one of the f- most far left people that I know on planet Earth, like literally like way, 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 way over here. But we still get together, have coffee, talk to each other because we like each other. And we, I love having political conversations with him because he's a very safe person because we love each other. Therefore, we can talk about hard topics and not like kill each other, you know. Right. Uh, and uh, and I was I was sitting with him one day and we were talking about this issue of guns, uh, gun gun rights or uh, Second Amendment. Uh, and his story, just so you know his background, he said uh, to me, by the way, in that conversation, he said, no one should have any guns ever. They should just be outlawed completely. I said, what about this? I met this farmer in South Dakota uh, who has a, a weaponry because he has wild animals on his property that are trying to kill his his animals. I said, what about that guy Like who's just trying to keep the wild animals away from killing his cows? He said, well, he should find another solution to that. He shouldn't use guns. That was his answer, right? And I thought, man, that's crazy. But now, now here's his story. When my friend was one years old, one, he was actually on my podcast. So you'll know his name is Jabez. When he was one, he watched his mom shoot his dad. Okay. And now uh, dad didn't die. Thank God. Like that escape glancing wound or whatever. 
But if you're one, one, and you see a weapon being used violently against one of your parents, your neurology will begin to code in such a way as to say, that's evil. There's no one ever should have one of those. And look, there's no clever conversation I'm going to be able to have with my boy to try to convince him otherwise. That's a perfect example of a, of a, of, of a confirmation bias that's inside someone's head that will simply not come out unless there's a miracle, uh, frankly, that uh, that takes that out. And you have to understand that in your brain right now, in the wiring in your brain, there exist strongholds exactly like the one I just described that frankly don't even make sense on paper until you start to see the results in your life. And you ask kind of like where to start. The place to start is the results. So if so, look into the areas of your life that you are, you don't, look into the areas of your life that you're like, you know what, that could be better. Okay, I'm going to give you a very practical example. Let's say your bank account <laughs> balance isn't quite where you want it to be. It's your savings and your investments, or your, if you're an entrepreneur like uh, Robert and I are, like your, your uh, you know, the income that you're bringing in through your books or your, or your revenue. It's not where it needs to be. Uh, there's, only, there's only one of two options. Number one, it's timing. You've done everything right, and sometimes it's just, you know, takes a little time for the Lord to deliver the things that he's going to deliver. Or number two, if it's not where it needs to be, there is a wiring issue that needs to get out of the way before that begins to change. I grew up in a family that believed that money was the root of all evil or the money didn't grow on trees and money was hard to get or whatever. Like all of those, all of those phrases, by the way became neurological coding in my brain that I had to work through when I became an entrepreneur. Because I remember one day sitting in my chair, I talk about this in the book. Uh, I remember I was sitting in my little prayer chair one day and I was praying and I heard a, a police cruiser. I, li I live up on the top of this hill. We have this valley that comes right down here. I heard this police cruiser running through the valley. And I remember thinking, gosh, I hope they're not coming for me. And I was like, whoa, 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 what, what was that thought? Like, I didn't do anything wrong. I, I Honestly, I didn't break any laws. Like, I went over the speed limit a little bit. Like, I'm a fighter pilot, whatever. So, but like, no real laws. You know, the police weren't coming for me. And I was like, why do I feel guilty? Why do I feel guilty? And I felt guilty because I was making money. I, I didn't know that, what the deal was, but I literally was make, starting to make money. That was my second year as an entrepreneur. Money was coming in. And I don't know why, but I felt bad. Like, I felt bad for the people who were giving me that money. Not, not, not to, I mean, like disregard the fact that they were being blessed, that they were getting my books, that they were getting the answers to their solutions. I had a refund policy. It wasn't like I was taking it and didn't have an option for them to come. It was, I was running an honorable business just like I, I am now. And, and I was like, why are they coming for me? And I realized, man, I got a, I got an issue here. I didn't know how to do God talks back then. I wasn't even having a conversation with God. Literally, I went through the book of Proverbs verse by verse, page by page, and put a little dot next to every place in the book of Proverbs that talks about money. And it blew my mind to realize that the Bible actually talks about several categories of wealth that we don't currently talk about. The B Bible talks about good, rich people. The media today doesn't talk about that. Movies today don't talk about that. You watch movies. Like if you watch any movie you, and the billionaire shows up, you're like, that guy's a jerk, man. He's a bad. You know, that's the bad guy. The music changes. And so all of this societal training, all this church training, frankly, growing up, Sometimes in the traditional church, uh, the church is a little sort of wary about money. And um, and because of that, there's a neurological coding. Now, here's what's fascinating. Right now, there are prophets all around the world who are talking about this great wealth transfer, the concept of this wealth that's going to move from the sinner's wealth is laid up for the righteous, right? It's all based on that verse uh, in Proverbs. And I've been telling folks on podcast interviews, I say, look, I believe that in the great wealth transfer, I actually believe God just triggered the great wealth transfer literally like 14 days ago. I had a sense in the spirit that was like, boom, it was on. But I've been telling people that's not coming to you unless you're able to rewire the way that you think about money so that you can, you can train your mind to think God's thoughts after him. Listen, you are blessed to be a blessing. It says in Proverbs, in, that's in, um, uh, in, in the old, in Genesis, uh, speaking about Abraham, if you are, if you go into Proverbs, it says the blessing of the Lord makes one rich and he adds no sorrow to it. So it shows a way. People always tell me, and I'm afraid money will make me a bad person. I said, look, the blessing of the Lord makes you rich and adds no sorrow to it. So as long as your wealth accumulation is through God's blessing, you can be sure that there's not going to be any sorrow added to it. And of course, the sinner's wealth is laid up for the righteous. We understand that in the natural way of doing things, Money should flow from unbelievers to believers, like pretty naturally, actually. And it's not. And part of the reason it's not is because God's people are pushing it away. So part of what I do and part of what certainly at this event uh, that we're doing is it's a it's an op opportunity for people. I mean, the book's over my shoulder. It's called God Talks. The event is called God Talks Wisdom for Business. It's an opportunity for people to to connect one on one with God in a group, in an environment where God's spirit is moving in a huge way. Um, by the way, there's that's what I'm talking about, baby. 
He's got the hardcover, man. That's the good one. So, um, so in a, in an environment where God's spirit is moving, and by the way, there's another thing that's very powerful when we get groups of people together, like this event, will have 220 to 300 people at this event. Uh, and, and when it says in Proverbs that, that wisdom will show up for whoever desires her, right? In, in Proverbs, she's personified as this woman. And it says, if you seek for her diligently, you'll find her. It says, she's very clear about that. Well, just imagine a group of 250 people sitting in a room for three days desiring wisdom. Do you think wisdom's interested in showing up? I'll tell you what, if 300 people in a room desiring me to show up, I'll be there. And when you do that, you invite God's spirit into this wonderful place and wisdom comes and partners with you. You can break through in a huge way. I had a woman, this is very common, by the way, the last event that you were at, Robert, in, in February, I had a woman show up who, who was a believer, walked with God for years. Uh, and she said, you know, I, I've always had trouble hearing from God. She said, I walked into the doors of your event and I sat down and I literally started writing and I couldn't stop. I was just downloading, downloading, downloading things from God. And she said, it didn't stop after that. She goes, every single day after that, and I met with her two and a half, two and a half months after this. She said, every day after this, I would sit down and have two, three, four pages with God. She goes, it got to be so much that I started uploading it. She actually uploaded it to ChatGPT and had, had AI start creating pictures of all the things, the images that God was writing down. That's what happens when you connect in this spirit-filled environment where you're inviting wisdom. You literally supercharge your ability to connect with God and to hear from him. And let me tell you, I'll say this and then I'll pitch it back to you. Now, there's no better time than the present. We are in the midst of a massive shift. Uh, God is moving uh, resources into his people's hands. He's shifting world governments. There's 50 elections across the world uh, this year. This is it. 2024 is a massive, massive transitional year. And there's no better time to position yourself for what God's sending you, which is all the results of the prayers that we've been asking. And by the way, all the results of the prophetic words you receive. Listen, I, I know so many people who have stacks of words that they've heard from either God or from prophetic people that haven't happened yet in their life. And let me tell you, now's the time to open yes. up the door to all, receive all those words too. So like, I feel this urgency in, in the spirit just to be like, now is the time. It's time to grab a hold of this. And whatever stronghold, uh, it, mental stronghold, we all have them, by the way, like, Dude, you and I have gone, Robert's a really good friend, just so you know, we're not just like doing this interview. We're very close friends. We've gone back and forth with each other on like things, man, I didn't know that I was believing that lie. Like me and him over a chorizo omelet at the headquarters down in Maricopa, which is like our favorite breakfast place. <laughs> I said, the back, the back seat with a John Wayne booth. The John right. Wayne seat, yeah. right. <laughs> so anyway, anyway, back back to you. No, no, no. That's actually the story I was going to tell because I so believe in this process for all of you that I want to give you, I want to talk about first these events, these God Talks events. You know, I got to be a part of one earlier this year. It was February in Scottsdale. It was right in your reason my backyard. So it was awesome. And I got to spend time with Ed and a whole bunch of amazing people. And at the end of it, Ed's big on debriefs, you know, because he always wants to go even higher and higher and higher. And we're having this debrief um, uh, the, the, the day after the event. And so they say to me, because this is my first time participating in the event, they said, what would you think? I said, look, I know this was technically an event for people to hear from God for strategies and tactics and breakthroughs and blueprints and marketing plans and everything else for their businesses. But this event had the best revival atmosphere I've been in in <laughs> ages. And Ed and his team were like, what do you mean by revival atmosphere? I said, the presence of God was so strong through the whole thing. And it was so, just like the lady told Ed, it was so easy to hear from God. The prophetic flow I got into, I was like, wow, I can't not prophesy over people. And part of the reason is... Because everybody shows up expecting, wanting, desiring with faith, and it creates this atmosphere where everybody's pulling on God with faith and expectancy. So when you go to a God Talks event, I can guarantee, unless you're going, na, 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 <laughs> you're going to hear from God. And even if you do that, you'll probably still hear because the atmosphere is amazing. I believe in this stuff. I mean, I've literally written a book on this called Winning the Battle for Your Mind-Blowing yeah. Emotions. I understand how to overcome the lies of the enemy. 
Yet when I got to know Ed, Ed and I got to be friends. We were we were both speakers in an event in Flagstaff about a year ago, and we've been buddies ever since. And I so appreciated what he shared that I grabbed the copy of his book, God Talks, and I'm reading through it. And I was like, this is a great book. It makes it so easy to hear from God. It's so easy to read. I sent it to my father, who's a non-believer, and Ed <laughs> just side talk, but you guys, I'll include you on in this. My dad and I had a conversation a couple of days before Father's Day. He's 90 now. And long story short, I said, Dad, you know, you're thinking about what comes next. Where are you with Jesus? Are you all good? Are you? And he's like, yep, I'm all good. And so my wow. unbelieving father is now a believing man wow. headed to heaven. Wow. And I'll tell wow. you, part of the reason was Ed's book. Because wow. Ed's a military guy. My dad was ex-Navy. Ed wrote him a note, sent him a copy of his book. <laughs> I don't think my father's read any of my books, but he read Ed's <laughs> book and it really influenced him. And it's so powerful. But here's the story I really want to tell you guys. And it's where Ed was going with our chorizo omelet breakfast at the headquarters in Maricopa. I decided not just to read the book, but I'm going to apply it. And I'm very prophetic. I'm very comfortable hearing from God in all areas. But I thought, you know what? I can feel there's such an anointing on this book. So I decided not only am I going to do the God Talks activations and exercises, I'm going to do the one I know I don't believe, believe any lies about. I'm going, because there's this one thing about lies you believe about God. And I'm thinking, yeah. I have such a, I was the, I, you guys know me, you know my testimony. I was like the degenerative of degenerates, the sinner of sinners, the heathen of heathens, the mocker of mockers. And then God shows up outside my cabin in the woods of Montana and yeah. declares, I refuse not to love you. And I have a radical salvation experience and fall massively in love with God and go into vision and vision and, and experience and experience where God's healing my heart, changing my thoughts. Uh, giving me such a revelation of the certainty of sonship and the certainty of his love. So I think I there's there's no lie about God that I believe. So I go through the activation on what lies do you believe about God? And I'm Ed and I are Ed's driving through town and he he sends me a text. It's like, hey, I'm driving through Maricopa. <laughs> let's do breakfast. So I drop everything I'm doing, go over, we meet for breakfast, and over these these awesome harizo omelets, I'm telling him, dude. I did the what lies do you believe about God? And I'm thinking, there's no lie I believe about God. I know he's good. I know he loves me. And he said, what happened? I said, almost immediately, the Lord spoke to me and said, you think your limitations limit me. Yeah. And I thought, oh, my goodness, Lord, I do have that in the back of my head. And here's the best part. So God reveals a lie that I was believing to some degree, and any lie that we believe is going to limit us. And my ministry had been doing well, my media had been doing well, but I have this experience with God, and then God leads me through what, what I believe, why I believe it, and then what his truth is and how to start decreeing it and declaring it. And Ed, and you know this because we talk all the time, within a month, doors are opening up for me, opportunities are coming, media invitations are happening, nations are inviting me in. And it was like the only limitation I had was somewhere in my head it had gotten in that God had blessed me. I'd had 20 years in ministry. I'd seen amazing things. And I guess this is it. And I guess the next level is not going to happen, not because God's good and he doesn't love me. But let's get real. I, there, other people have more gifts than I do. Yeah. Other people have more favor than I do. And God's like, why do you think your limitations limit me? Everything I have is for you. And as soon as I started to believe that, it was like this breakthrough to a whole nother level of reach, influence, and impact for the kingdom. Man, that's something money right there. And that was it's an area I didn't think I would. I mean, you could with how I grew up and there were certain areas like, OK, I need to get my head around some lies about money, I believe. And that shifted, that changed. But even in the area, I was certain I know God is good. I know he loves me. I know everything in his household is for me. But I didn't realize there was a part of me that believed to a point, because let's get real. I'm not as talented and gifted as some of the people that I serve with. So my limitations limit God. No, they really don't. <laughs> It's fascinating. Like, I mean, in this, in the book, chapter one, I tell the story about the first time I did this exercise and uh, I, I was in a counselor's office and the counselor asked me, Hey, and I want you to ask God, what lies do you believe about you? And I, at the time I wasn't even sure God spoke. Honestly, I was just sort of like going through the motions, but I knew that I needed to change something because it was, life was just not the way that I needed it to be. And I, I decided, so, so the counselor said, I want you to ask God, what lies do you believe about you? And, and I, I thought, well, I'll just ask and then I'll pretend 
some answers. You know, I'll just like make some stuff up so that he'll feel like he had a good session. And the moment, the moment I said, God, what lies do I believe about me? He, out of the silence, he said to me, you believe you're alone. And it was in this moment, I, I go into more detail in the book, but I literally w- was transported in the spirit to a, a really vivid memory that I had when I was six years old. It was during my parents' divorce. And it, it, this God literally like took me from one place into another place and then took me back into the counseling room. And when I came back, I was weeping. I was just weeping. I mean, literally crying in front of two grown men. And I'm a Marine. Like, I don't cry every once in a while, like during, you know, like when Rudy plays that game, you know, or like Hoosiers, the final, Jimmy Chitwood makes that final shot. I mean, I'll cry a little bit at the end of those sports movies, but I don't cry like about me. And here I am crying in front of two grown men. And I thought, man, that's crazy. Like, I didn't even think this worked. That's why I always tell people like, you don't even have to believe this process will work for you for the process to work for you. You don't even have to believe in God. I know most of the people watching do watching this, this show do, but I, I literally have a, had, had, had atheists who just like rolled up their s- sleeves and put on their big boy pants. And I don't even know why they're at the event. Honestly, it was called God talks, but they showed up and they did the exercises and they came up to me afterwards and were like, Ed, I'm an atheist and I have two to three page of pages of notes from God. How does that work? And I'm like, I don't know. You're the atheist. You tell me how that works. And the point <laughs> of that is if I can show an atheist how to have a dynamic life-changing conversation with God, I can show you how to do it too. And it's time, man, I'm telling you like right now it's time. I could just feel right. We're recording this in in the beginning of June, right in the beginning of this month, man, I could feel the rubber hit the road in the spirit and God's intensity turn on. It was like his gaze just, just went like this fixed, a fixed attention. And it was like, it's time. And I know you look at the world and you see all the, discouragements and all the frustrations and failures in leadership across the world, not just across our country. And I know that's frustrating. And, and and it makes, sometimes it makes a person feel helpless or angry or discouraged. But like, what if you were part of the solution? I mean, even if, even maybe a big part of the solution, by the way, maybe a small part of the solution. Look, there, there's, there are literally nations changing, completely changing as we speak, changing hands, people, righteous people taking the reins, uh, countries like El Salvador. I mean, there's, God is moving right now. Aslan's on the move. And, and your job is to be part of that. Look, you, you want to look back 20 years from now, your grandkids will, will ask you, what was it like living in 2024? Okay. This is how epic of a moment we're in right now. Uh, and I will just say you don't want to miss out on that. And and missing out will cost cost you a time, attention. Uh, you have all these words that God's spoken to you. It's time to bring them into your life and the process. It's not the only thing to do. Like there's a lot of there's a lot of strategies, but part of the process is the book over my shoulder, grab that book. And by the way, if you're a business person or you are interested in being in business, okay, there it is. God talks, uh, the God talks book. If you are a business person or you're interested in being in business, we have an event coming up in July. It's called God Talks Wisdom for Business. It's July 29th to the 31st. You may be watching this after that. That's fine. You can still go to the website and see the next dates and events. This will be the last of our smaller, more intimate events. Like I said, there'll be about 250 people probably in the room uh, at this uh, event. And it's an opportunity for you to download from, from God the details in your business. I always tell people when it comes to business, most believers are like Galatians 3.3. Paul said, have you begun by faith? Are you now trying to be perfected by works? And most business owners ask God the big questions in their business and leave the details in their business to them and their team and their planning cells and everything. And I can tell you, if you're up for it, God is more than happy to to engage with you on the details of your business. I'm talking down to the social media post level details. I'm talking down to the employee, the team member, uh, when and how and how to grow and like where to target, where to find your leads, what kind of customers to find. We're going to do do exercises in, in this event on how to find a perfect schedule. I have an exercise called Easy and Light, uh, which is God's approach to your perfect schedule. It's how you can make more and work less. This event, uh, unbelievable, by the way. It's like I'm I'm biased, but that doesn't mean I'm not right. There's nothing like this in the world uh, where business owners can come and download detail, detailed business blueprints uh, from God. I think we're going to put all the details uh, below in the description here on YouTube. Um, so that you can see all that. Cause I'd love, love for you to go through that link. When you do that, I did have my team activate a coupon code. It's on the link below. It's the word special that gives you $200 off and it lets you bring a guest uh, for a small seat deposit. So it's a really good deal. Uh, the, the events will sell out all the time. Uh, there, there's a charge. Okay. So just so you know, it's not like a, 
I know sometimes you go to like free events and stuff. It's not like that. This is for real people who want to have a real business, either have a real business or want to have a real business and don't want to mess around. Okay. So I would say like, if you don't pay, you don't pay attention. A friend of mine uh, once, once said that, I thought that's a pretty good line. Uh, and so it's an investment. This is a high, high quality event. It's in a beautiful event site. There's a lot of expense that we put into the event. Uh, full transparency, we put about 150 to $200 per attendee into the event. This one's on the high side. So this is like a big boy, legitimate event. Uh, we're not messing around. We're not meeting at some folding chair, church church venue or whatever. Nothing wrong with folding chair, church venues. I'm just saying like this is a real business event. And if you're serious about like turning it on this year and really seeing all, all of what God has for you come to pass in your life, there's no better event than this. I will just tell you. Uh, and we do. We're going to close the uh, registration out. I think fairly soon. Uh, looking looking at the numbers, so just enroll. Uh, enroll to bring your spouse, or your business partner, or your son, or your daughter. If you have a teenager, bring them to this event. My goodness, if I could have, my kids come. <laughs> if I could have, dude. If I could have come to this event when I was eighteen, oh my goodness, it would have changed. It would have changed a lot for me. So. Yeah, and you know yeah, what? it is awesome. an investment, but I also want to say I've been getting invited to a lot more business things and business summits and to speak prophetically into businesses and business people. And while this is a serious event and it is an investment, it's still an incredibly good deal because I think it's so. <laughs> half to a third or less to some of the events that I'm invited to speak at, and I see what they charge. It's not like this is a thousand dollars a plate or anything like that. It's a, it is an investment, but it's an incredibly good deal, and you get a ton. Yeah. out of it. And again, I'm biased as well, only because not only do I think the events are powerful and I've seen what it's done for people, I've seen what this process has done for me. And I <laughs> want to echo what Ed said. If you're in business, if you have a business, if you want to take your business to the next level, if you want a business one day, but I'll also say if you're in ministry, because I know what the, what's done for me in ministry and God showing me areas he wanted to move me into that I probably wouldn't have paid attention to because they weren't traditional five-fold ministry areas, but I'm serving on the board of directors directors of businesses now to bring prophetic input into businesses because yeah. that that opened up once I went through the God talks uh, and was like, you think your limitations limit me? And I was like, I'm not a businessman. It's like, yeah, but I am. So I can speak through you to these businesses. So there's so if, if you want to if you want to grow your YouTube channel, your social media platform, anything like that, I highly encourage you to come and be a part of wisdom for business because you'll also not only get strategies, tactics, blueprints, battle plans, downloads, details, but you're also going to learn not only just in these few days, those things, but you're going to learn how to do this every single day. Like yeah. I know Ed does this hours a day sometimes and is <laughs> constantly getting input from God, updates from God to the point of some of the things he and I talk about that we're dreaming for each other together, for the guys that we're in a connection with. It's crazy the things God are sh is showing us, but the other really cool thing about this is you'll come and be a part of a community that's yeah. going to believe with you and cheer you on for the ridiculous, impossible, absolutely God-able things. It's one of my favorite things about God Talks is the community of people that come that will encourage you not only to hear, but they'll cheer you on as you build and grow into that truly glorious future that's way more brilliant than anything you've imagine it's good man by the way the thing you said about ministry folks i i've i have been able to uh connect with and teach and train and um really minister to more ministry people this year i'm talking about traditional pastors evangelists prophets teachers uh folks who who you would consider traditional sort of non-profit 501c3 uh, ministry and the biggest shift this year literally the biggest shift is seeing most of these people move from that traditional space into what I would consider more of an entrepreneurial uh, kind of space. It's, yeah. it's, it, and by the way, it's the most natural move. Like if you have a pastor with gifted communication skills, the person understands God's word, but also can help people and, and give advice. It's a very natural thing for that pastor to maybe write a book, to maybe do some right. consulting or advising for businesses. And it used to be like, uh, I don't know, like 20 years ago, like if the pastor like went from being a pastor and started consulting businesses. People were all like, you know, what did he have like an affair or something like that? It's happening very naturally now without any issues. Okay. Without sin. It's just that it's just a natural thing. And I'll, I'll just say like, without, without demeaning the church's budget or anything like that, there are people who are serving as pastors very faithfully whose gifts and, 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 uh, 
abilities and their wisdom far exceeds the the money they're receiving. So uh, there's three columns I always talk about. One is wisdom, one's influence, and one's money. And those actually in the spirit should line up. So the more wisdom you have and the more influence you have, the money should actually line up with that. And I know a lot of pastors or people in ministry who, where the wisdom is really high, the influence is really high, and the money's really low. And that's actually injustice. So like, you know, God can do no injustice, it says in Zephaniah 3, 5. I only say that because I love quoting Zephaniah. But, you know, Isaiah 59 is another great passage where it just talks about God, uh, God's attention towards justice. And and you should, I mean this when I say this, you should be receiving uh, a monetary compensation for the great work that you're doing in the world. And so if you are in ministry or you maybe want to go into ministry, it's important to train yourself entrepreneurially because I think that's like the new move. And I'll tell you, there are pastors now who are moving into this entrepreneur space and they're making enough money that they just can look back at their church and say, look, I don't need to draw salary anymore because I've already, I'm already taken care of over here. And that's a wonderful place to be. It happens to be the exact place Paul was when he was entrepreneurially making tents. We always talk about tent making, like it's like this missionary, like Paul was actually in business, right? He was really actually in business. uh, And he took his business with a wonderful uh, opportunity, like travel with your business. And he was able to support this ministry. But at the same time, Imagine being able to live in a tent built by the Apostle Paul. What do you think? Like, how do you think God's spirit, when that thing Seriously. got delivered? For real, like when you were in there, yeah. you're like, man, there's something special about the scent. Yeah, it was designed and made by a man that the, like it says in um, uh, Isaiah 42, it says of the servant of the Lord, it says, I've clothed him with my spirit. Well, God clothes, clothes his servants with his spirit too. And when you craft, when you create something, craftsmanship, that spirit continues on with that tent. It's amazing. And so, like, he was not only just like some people think, oh, he's just like paying in his way. Yeah, he was like making money to pay his way, but he was also being such a blessing to those yeah. people who were. This I'm not talking about like one of those Coleman tents. I'm talking about this big thing people can live in, right? And it's just so fun to think about Paul as an entrepreneur too. And I'm gonna have you pray for everybody in just a minute, Go but on. guys, I'm in the description of this video. I'm gonna put a link where you can go to find out more about the God Talks Wisdom for Business event in San Diego, July 29 through 31. Ed's obviously going to be there. His incredible Uh team's going to be there. I'm going to be there. Robert will be there. The amazing Tony Kim is going to be there. (laughs) But you want to be there. So there'll be a link below. And then use that code SPECIAL so you get that $200 discount and you can bring someone for basically a seat deposit. They don't, yeah. you know, it's not a whole nother registration fee. You just pay for basically the, the hotel seat deposit that everybody has to cover. And that way you and a friend can come. So you're actually getting an amazing deal and it's really not that expensive at all. And when you look at the investment, it is, you don't want to miss it. So all that will be in the, I'm putting the, I'm putting the code to use just below our pictures, but then in the video description will be the link where you can then click on, it will give you all the information and you can register for this event and you want to register today because these things sell out and it's going to fill up because, uh, Ed and Tony are going to do a uh, a stream together and that's going to bring in even more people. And like Ed said, this is probably the last one that's going to be small because all sorts of things are happening and they're going to start going to 1,000 and 5,000 people. This is going to be an incredible opportunity to where you're really able to connect with everybody there and connect with all the speakers. So Ed, do me a favor and pray us out. Pray a blessing over everybody. Yeah, let's do it. The thing that I'm going to pray for, so you've heard the phrase, I will restore the years the locust has eaten. Um, one of the things that God can do, so there, so so super quick. Uh, so y'all know, like in Greek, there's two words for time. There's Chronos time and Kairos time. Chronos time is like it's like you know eleven o'clock, and Kairos time is like when I ask my wife what time dinner is going to be ready, and she's like, "It'll be ready when it's ready." You know, it's be ready whenever it's ready. And more times than not, God operates on Kairos time. And I started thinking about that because, I'm like, when the Israel's Israelites left Egypt. They were supposed to go across the desert, walk right into Israel and like take over, but it took 40 years. It went slower, slower than it should have. So Kairos can actually be slowed down. But I was asking God, like, if it could be slowed down, therefore it could also be sped up. And when you hear about Joel 2, I think it's Joel 2, when it talks about, I'll restore the years of the locusts is eaten. What God means by saying that in, in some ways is, let's say you have 10 years of prophetic words that haven't come to pass for one reason or another. Well, just sometimes getting the right 
thought pattern in place, tr- retraining your, your neurology, positioning yourself in a place for blessing. You can receive all those things, those 10 years and 10 months. You can accelerate whatever God was bringing to you and you can set yourself up as though there was no 10 year delay. Uh, and so I'm going to pray that God would release Kairos acceleration into your life. And uh, then we'll wrap it up. Thanks, Lord. We just honor you. We thank you for everyone who's watched this uh, show, especially, Lord, all the way to the end. Sometimes people watch 10, 10 seconds, 10 minutes, but not all the way to the end. I just want to say uh, I honor the person who's watching this right now, who who dug in and took the time to get to the end of it. And so, Lord, we just pray your blessing on that person. And, and uh, Father, we just decree a Kairos acceleration that 10 years would turn into 10 months, that 12 years of of frustration would unwrap in 12 months or even 12 days so that they could see whatever it is that you're sending to them, the relationships, the connections, the influence, the wealth, the book that someone's supposed to write. I, I for sure see like uh, several people actually who, who are praying for right now that God has already called you to write a book and he's like, it's time. Okay. So like, it's time to start putting that stuff together. Uh, and some of you are thinking about doing businesses. We just pray your blessing, the entrepreneurial blessing, Lord, it is like a, a, biblical blessing to be able it's it's all it's a multiplication blessing so when jesus talked told the story about 30 60 90 100 fold blessing that is an entrepreneurial blessing we just bless you entrepreneurially that you may be able to turn a dollar into a hundred dollars turn a thousand dollars into a million dollars turn a million dollars into a billion dollars that that about one thousand times blessing from deuteronomy 111 and just to wrap up, may the Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you, lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Let's do this thing, man. Looking forward to seeing you in July, buddy. Yeah, I am too. And everybody, I wanted to ask you to do something. Post in the comments, I'm in. And what I mean by I'm <laughs> in is you're telling God, I'm in. I want to be one of your solutionaries. I'm in for the wealth transference. I'm in for the increase. Whatever it is, you're willing to allow God to show you any lie that you believe, but even more, you're going to let him show you the truth that overcomes it so you can come into your glorious future. Post in the comments, I'm in. Ed, I love you, buddy. See you in July, and we'll see you there as well for God Talks Wisdom for Business. Thanks, everybody, for being with us today. Ready for more? Go to roberthodgkin.com for more teachings, more resources, and more information about Robert Hodgkin Ministries and Men on the Front Lines.